full of stork of stork custom mouthpieces. We have been putting together a new video series focusing on the various elements of mouthpiece design that we hope to present over the next few months. These videos are meant to be an amplification of the Dr. Mouthpiece articles we have presented in the past. So let's get started. Today's topic concerns the most important item in selecting the proper mouthpiece, inner diameter size. This aspect of the mouthpiece, more than any other, can dictate the potential success or failure of the player, especially for the upper brass player. The inner diameter is measured from the inside of the rim and is traditionally measured at the bite, which can be defined as the high point of the main arc just inside the rim. The first question I usually ask when consulting with a player is, what type of lips do you have, thin, average, or fleshy? As you can see from the pictures here, humans run the gamut from really fleshy lips to very thin lips and everything in between. The inner diameter you choose should reflect the type of lips you have. This is essential because there is a direct relationship that exists between the degree of fleshiness of the lips and how much lip surface is optimum for exposure inside the rim of a mouthpiece. This concept is based on the theory of tensile strength which can be defined as the maximum amount of stress a given material can take before failure. For brass players, this simply means that a player with thin lips will have less ability to keep their lips from being blown apart inside a large exposed area than a person with fleshy lips would. If you place a rock on a tissue paper, think thin lips, it breaks apart easily. If you place the same rock on a heavier cloth, think someone with thicker lips, the cloth sustains the weight easily. So, does this mean that players with thin lips have an inherent flaw? Not at all, because thin lips have the advantage of being able to vibrate like crazy with very little effort. If you take the same tissue paper and blow on it, you can see how quickly it vibrates. On the other hand, Blowing at the towel takes a lot more effort to set it into motion. So the basic rule becomes thin lips, smaller inner diameter, fleshy lips, larger inner diameter. A smaller inner diameter for a thin lip player exposes less surface area, which offers support to the thin lip player while still allowing for plenty of vibration. On the other hand, Thicker lips benefit from having more exposed surface area to free the lips to vibrate, and they have enough inherent tensile strength to hold together inside a larger area. If you haven't selected the inner diameter size of your mouthpiece based on this rule, you may not be playing on an optimal setup for your physiology. Many players struggle with the effects of having chosen the wrong inner diameter without ever realizing it. For instance, a thin lip player playing on an inner diameter that is too large will likely have the following issues. Poor endurance, poor range, faulty intonation, and a thin sound, especially when ascending in range. All of these issues are a result of thin lips not being able to maintain control of the aperture in too large of an exposed surface area, most especially in instances where they will need to be pushing lots of air through the instrument. For the fleshy lip player, using a large enough diameter to fit their lips inside of the rim is critical to playing with a compression type embouchure, as opposed to a pressure based system. Compression, in this context, means that the player is using their musculature to control the aperture, not the pressure of the mouthpiece. And while everyone uses pressure to some extent, and some thick lipped players can be very successful using a controlled pressure approach, Many of these players develop serious embouchure issues from trying to play on a mouthpiece that is too small for them. This is one of the most common flaws that we see in fleshy-lipped players. Many players who are handed a mouthpiece with a small inner diameter, like the ubiquitous 7C for trumpet players, but who had lips that needed something much larger, are immediately starting with a huge handicap. The saddest thing I see is that the most talented of these players endure and overcome to a great extent only to realize, usually during their college years, that what they were able to come up with, embouchure-wise, will not be able to meet the demands placed upon them. For more on how improper sizing can affect the embouchure and how to correct these issues, stay tuned for our next discussion. 
If you'd like more information about who we are and what we do, you can find us on the web at storkcustom.com. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of these discussions, just hit the red subscribe button below. See you soon.